So there's an interesting thing that happens every so often in Obsidian's Pentiment. When you're talking with other characters, this additional text block might appear in the midst of your conversation. This will be remembered. Now, that's not anything surprising for people who are familiar with the traditional gameplay mechanisms of narrative RPGs. It's fairly common. In games like this, you'll be given a choice between a few different options, and after you've chosen, the game will inform you that this particular action will be remembered. Usually, though, these moments are obvious. Either the game prompts you textually, letting you know this particular action is more important than others, or the nature of the moment itself will betray its import. But in Pentiment, these moments are not given any special consideration. They may appear in the midst of seemingly mundane discussion. By building its narrative systems in this way, Pentiment takes the hardline stance that there is no right choice amongst its dialogue options. You can't min-max the experience of Andreas' life. You can only live it. Pentiment senior producer Alec Frey, in a discussion with Digital Trends, said this was by the deliberate design of game director and New Vegas alum Josh Sawyer, saying that Josh thought it would be compelling to not talk about the rightness and wrongness of it. It's often more compelling to be like, we're in a world here and making decisions, and those decisions have effects. It's not about being right or wrong, it's about what impact you have on the world. Now, in researching for this video to make sure my understanding of player choice within narrative experiences was as well-rounded as it could be, I played Fallout New Vegas for the very first time. I wanted to see especially how Obsidian had dealt with player choice in the past, and since Sawyer was the game director on New Vegas, it seemed like a logical research choice. Now I'll say right out the gate, the stories contained within New Vegas are incredible, but while I enjoyed its narrative as a straight work of fiction, the way I was allowed to engage with the story and its characters from an interactive perspective created a dissonance in my mind that I couldn't ever quite shake. Like I said a second ago, this was my first proper Fallout game. If you don't count the mobile vault building game I probably dumped a couple dozen hours into around the height of its popularity, I'd osmosed much of the other games from friends, so I knew how the Fallout games played, and I knew the broad strokes of how the RPG systems worked. Now, what I wasn't expecting, especially given the dialogue choices in Pentiment, was how functional the dialogue in New Vegas is. Now, when I say functional, I don't mean of or having a specific activity, purpose, or task relating to the way in which something works or operates. I mean designed to be practical and useful rather than attractive. The dialogue in New Vegas is a blunt instrument. Every one of your own dialogue options betrays its intent, obviously trying to do one thing or another with no subtext. If you're trying to learn about the location of a character or place, the correct dialogue option for that path will be abundantly clear. And maybe the NPC has some interesting info about the local territory. The, the options to coax that info from them will be plainly obvious. Sometimes special dialogue options will appear based on your expertise in certain skills, and selecting these options might get you out of a tricky situation more easily than relying on your weapons alone. But in these situations, it always felt to me like that special option was the right option, rather than one particular character-driven choice amongst many. The quote-unquote rightness of these options even caused me at one point when my speech skill wasn't quite high enough to succeed down the right path to abandon that particular conversation entirely, go level up my skills, and return later to select the speech-focused dialogue branch. But in that moment, I broke the immersion of New Vegas. The quest I'm talking about is well off the beaten path in an area far to the west called Jacobstown. Jacobstown is a secluded refuge for super mutants and nightkin, and the wary of outsiders allowed me to help their human doctor with experiments into the local Night Stalker population and their own seemingly worsening collective mental illness. The mutant mental illness and rogue Night Stalkers both seem to have been affected by stealth boy use. So I was tasked with heading to a nearby Night Stalker lair to investigate, and perhaps collect tools for testing, to hopefully 
eventually find a cure for the mutant's stealth boy related afflictions. Blah blah blah, kill the Night Stalkers, find a chewed up stealth boy, bring it back to the dock. He's like, yeah, this is busted, I can't use it, guess I gotta use this dangerous experimental prototype I've got here. He does, and it turns out it's at least temporarily safe, so in barges another Nightkin to demand the specs to the prototype stealth boy. This is where the dialogue exchange in question takes place. This guy barges in with two cronies, and they're big, so they take up almost the whole door. I assumed this meant they wouldn't let me out, that I had to make a choice then and there. But down at the bottom of the dialogue options, I could goodbye my way out of the conversation, at least temporarily. I was surprised I could, but assumed this was the devs giving me a chance to maybe fix my loadout, knowing that combat was now inevitable. But when I tried just walking around the Nightkin, I, I, I could. And they didn't follow. They didn't try to stop me, they just hung out there, awaiting my decision about whether or not to hand over the prototype designs, and they waited and waited and waited until many more quests later I returned and told them in no uncertain terms that they could not have the prototype, and they left peacefully. By New Vegas letting me leave this untenable situation with the Nightkin and return later, days later, to finish the dialogue, it broke its own internal consistency. Keen, the Nightkin in question, is, by his own admission and the admission of others, impatient and irritable. Why would he wait for days on end for me to resolve this situation? Pentiment would not have allowed this, and I think is better for it. In Pentiment, by the time you realize you're well on your way down an undesirable dialogue branch, it is too late. You gotta commit. The consequences of your every seemingly innocuous action accumulate behind the scenes, culminating then in a bigger moment down the line. And in Pentiment, as in New Vegas, these moments are made clear, and you can see the stark reality of how your words have affected those around you. Your previous actions affect the outcome of this new conversation, how you treated the citizens of this small Bavarian town if you hadn't considered it before suddenly is the only thing you can think about. But with few exceptions, Pentiment does not indicate that any one dialogue choice is any more important than the others. Typically, the choices are just subtly different from one another, shades of the same thought, with slightly different inferences or intonations. The difference between where have you been and where have you been. This, then, is the chief distinction in how Pentiment sets itself apart from other games of its ilk. This persuasion system, as it was dubbed by the devs, is what drives all of Pentiment's conversations. And this is true to life. When we make conversations with our friends, with strangers, with anyone, we have no control over what details they remember, what phrases stick in their mind. I have this vivid recollection of an interaction I had with a stranger sometime circa 2007 at a middle school youth group event. We'd just moved to Florida from California and I didn't know anybody at this new church my family was going to. This was my first time attending this youth group and so I was being dragged around by one of the greeters and introduced to other kids my age. I was young, I'm 14 years old, and I'd just begun to grow facial hair. My mustache was sparse and raggedy, I knew it, but I also knew that that was just something I'd have to deal with for the time being. But it also wasn't something I was thinking about as this stranger was introducing me to other strangers. That is, until some rando was introduced to me and as he was shaking my hand said, lose the mustache. Buddy, I don't remember your name and I hardly remember your face, but I remember those three words. Was I particularly proud of my mustache? No. Did I know it looked scraggly? Yes. But the audacity to tell someone you literally just met this bit of unsolicited life advice, this will be remembered. And the devs at Obsidian knew this, with historical consultant Edmund Kern telling The Verge that the same kinds of motives and instincts and anxieties and fears that we have manifested themselves in the early 16th century. Pentiment is as accurate a simulator of being a regular present-day person amongst regular present-day people as it is a series of richly textured and layered historical vignettes. By obfuscating the mechanical consequences of every dialogue option, Sawyer and company have made every line of dialogue equally important, and equally capable of altering the outcome of the story, just as it is in life. 
Your hello to a neighbor one morning is the flap of butterfly wings that causes a hurricane. You can't anticipate it, you can't plan for it, but like it or not, you and I both have that power. By creating this persuasion system and by choosing not to rely on morality stats or good or bad endings, Obsidian created a game that is all at once an incredible presentation of a very specific point in time, but also a game that is incredibly timeless. Hey everybody, this is uh, Jake Terrio with Subpixel. Um, Will says I can't come back to the studio unless you like and subscribe. And if you leave a comment, he even says he'll give me a warm uh, blanket. So uh, please do that, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you in the next video.